Hi guys, it's me Vipiano and um, how's it going? So we're going to talk about master the art of accompaniment. Um, piano as a backup instrument. So let's see when you are an accompaniment, um, <clears throat> a backup piano player. Do you understand? Accompaniment when you're a backup piano player. A lot of people will play as uh, um, auxiliary. So let's just say auxiliary keyboards because that accompaniment it's it's a big grammar for some people to speak. Okay, so. As a backup keyboardist or as a backup piano player, what is expected of you in a full setting when you have a band and the rest will be talking about this? We'll go, we'll go slow and steady. I'll be giving you ideas you can apply and practical implementation of those ideas. So make sure you watch to the end of this video. Don't forget to share this video. And if you're not following, don't forget to also make sure you like, share, tell me where you're watching from. Yeah, just tell me where you're watching from and share this video so I can reach out to more persons to flow. So, um, you know, we have to take it slow and steady, slow and steady, slow and steady. So now, um, you ask yourself, okay, what does it mean to accompany? To accompany, what does it mean to act as a backup instrument? Now, first thing you have to understand. Now, just so we... Do something. Now, if you listen to this sound, I'm going to ask you, what do you think about this sound? So tell me what you think about this sound. But for your grace, I could not so this is the sound we're using for, uh, this is the soundtrack we're using for. But for your grace, I would go my way. And forever grateful got to be. Now, as beautiful as it sounds, you will notice I'm going to explain some things that you know when an accompany an accompaniment like a backup piano is added to this sound, you will understand it can sound even more beautiful. You understand it can sound even more beautiful, more lovely, and more interesting. So now, as I was trying to say something, I said in a life setting, a full life setting, you understand. Your, 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 your every instrument playing is originally a backup instrument. They are all backing the lead singer in a live setting. Do you understand? Every instrument playing, they are originally backing up the live, the, the lead singer. But, you know, most people, they don't understand that you're actually backing up the lead singer. But there are some situations whereby it is a full band, a band whereby there is no lead singer. So at that point, there's, there are some times whereby uh, there are some times whereby a particular instrument can become the lead, the lead instrument. You understand? So let's get that first because you know I have to explain little by little so that when we get to where we are going to, we arrive very well. You understand? Okay. Now, in a life setting, a real life situation where you have a singer you have your band full band and the rest and you are acting as an auxiliary keyboard what does it mean, what does it mean to be an auxiliary keyboard is a backup keyboard it means you are you are assisting the main keyboard there's a main keyboard is there's an auxiliary keyboard if you check in the display button of this um in the display screen right now you see me i, I have two keyboard but this is just doing one one this uh, one is doing um the digital display and the other one is showing my hand but in real life situation you will see two real keyboards like two keyboards one keyboard is displaying the main keyboard the other keyboard is displaying the auxiliary keyboard you understand there's nothing actually like main it's just you have chosen to do this so i'm going to explain i'm i'm coming somewhere i'm you know i'm going slow slow and steady so i'm going to get to somewhere We'll get to somewhere. I'm also going to show you. Um, okay, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you. This is my screen. So you see, I'm going to show you all of these. We have done vocals, drums, bass, piano, guitar, and I'm going to explain in details how this can go. And when we start using sounds like strings, trumpets, violin, flutes, and other sounds, you can suggest in the course of accompanying. A, a main piano instrument or when the piano is 
uh, acting as an uh, a backup or an auxiliary keyboard you understand so there are different ways to do it so first of all what you have to understand is generally your keyboard is first acting as a backup instrument to your main to the singer but that is not where i want to base the lesson um i'm um you know i want to base the lesson on you backing up another keyboardist so the both of you are actually now let's do it like this you have your main keyboardist which is backing up uh one second You have your main keyboard, which is backing up the singer. You understand? And then you are backing up the main keyboardies. So in total, the both of you are backing up <laughs> the main uh, singer. You understand? So I'm going to explain all that for you. Uh, just a second. I want to do something. No, continue. I'm not rushing today. You understand? I have a lot of time today. So we'll take it slow and steady. It's going to be very interesting. And a beautiful class you will enjoy so make sure you watch to the end okay so now what are the different sounds you can use as a backup keyboardist let's listen to the sound but for your this is a simple regular worship song I could not now in this sound if you notice but for your there is a there is a keyboard there is a keyboard there is a drum there is a keyboard drum, there is a lead guitar, which, which is a clean guitar, and um, I think keyboard drum, guitar, and bass. So you have four instruments. But you, you're serving as the auxiliary, which is you want to back up the main keyboard. Now, this is what we have. Most times, the issue that comes out in band, most band, you know, when you're backing up with it, you want to play with your fellow keyboard. Most keyboardists, most piano players, they find it difficult to play along with their fellow keyboardists. They're always fighting. It is not the time for you to show how skillful you want to start soloing, you want to have your drag. No. In a real life situation, one second. In a real life situation, this is how it should be. A particular instrument let's say the basis is holding the groove okay let's switch let's switch now so i'll show you i'm coming to somewhere i'm looking at the right avenue that i'm going to follow so that you pick out everything i want to explain so let's take it slow and steady and those people that are using headsets they are the ones that are going to really enjoy this so let's say we have a full live band right now this is our vocal this is our drum you understand so i'm going to switch this off and leave only the vocals you see but for your grace so this is it now we have our drums playing so you see but for your grace i could not be saved you see the drums playing but for your very grace. lovely song now we have our bass playing so if you watch the drum understand first of all that you are backing up somebody so try not to be noisy the drummer is playing okay it's playing beautiful let's go to the bass remember i said i'll show you how to use strings how, how to use pad violins lead guitar a lot of stuff so when you're acting as an auxiliary keyboard but you know i like to go from little 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 so that when i go deeper you're going to explain so let's continue so this is the bass holding down the groove you have to use your headphones if you want to hear the bass. But for your grace, now this is the main keyboard. Is it's gonna play? So this is piano playing. But for your grace, very simple. It is not a time for you to be, you know, especially when you have an auxiliary keyboard and you have the main keyboard. Especially you that is playing main keyboard, you have to be as disciplined as possible. It's not a time for you to make noise. Listen to what this keyboard is playing, for example. Let me switch off the bass. But for your grace, I could Very simple and beautiful. But 
Even at that, it is still skillful. You can still see the skill and the beauty in it. It's not you're making too much noise because they say you're the main keyboardist. In fact, let me tell you the truth. Main keyboardist does not do as much work than the auxiliary keyboardist. The auxiliary keyboardist, they do more, they, they, in fact, they do more work. Do you understand? So main keyboardists, they don't work as, they are, they are, it, it is not as tasking. But do you know why it is tasking for main keyboardists? Why? It's most times, if you, have, uh, if, you, if you have, let's say, a real life situation of a band and you go for a particular, it is the main keyboard that does the introduction most time, that does all the key finding and the rest. After the main keyboardists have held down the groove, then the auxiliary keyboardists follow. So, in an emergency situation, <laughs> Most times, the auxiliary keyboardist will be looking at the main keyboard. I play the progression because this is the main keyboardist. You have to look out. What progression is this main keyboardist playing? Because two of you, your progressions must not clash. You have to look at because you are you are accompanying him. It's just like you're a stretch of his arm. Arm. Those things he cannot play because he's having one keyboard. That's what you should play. You understand? So you shouldn't do it like you, sh you shouldn't you shouldn't do it like a fight. You're just a stretch. Now you that is playing main keyboard, don't play to the extent that you're too noisy. You don't even give the auxiliary keyboard space. You want to show your skills. You want to play everything. There is no space. The music is not beautiful. It is not organized. It is noise and noise. Everybody wants to show how skillful they are. No. Hold your chords, hold your beautiful chords, flow with the progression, then let the music flow. You understand? So now let's listen to this music again, then we'll continue our class as it's going. So you see? Now if you watch, the main keyboard is here, you see, piano, just playing simple progressions, music, no noise. Now what happens when the main keyboard is disciplined? It gives space for the auxiliary keyboards to flow and also for other, other instruments in the band to actually play and flow along. Very simple play, just the keyboard. Now, let's add the bass. You see, this is beautiful on itself, like this. You understand? Now, we have guitar. Let's add the guitar. Now, this is what the guitar was just playing. We've not even added auxiliary. Auxiliary, that's where we are coming. When we start adding auxiliary, you now see how beautiful, more beautiful this can sound. Now, let's say this is the guitar that was playing. But for see? Your grace, I could not be this is beautiful. You have a beautiful sound. So, uh, those uh, music directors, coordinators, when, you, when you're coordinating your band, Everybody should hold a particular groove, should be in the groove. You should understand? So that the music is organized. Now, this is one tip I'll give you. This is one tip I'll give you. When you're playing with a band, if you are in a band, you understand? Listen to someone's groove. Then create a groove or a rhythm that doesn't affect. Because this is more like music production in an extent. What I mean is... If I'm going to play dun 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 now you know someone is playing dun 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 don't play any groove that is going to interfere with that one instead as the person do dun 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 you you play is the person do dun 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 pam pam dun 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 pam pam dun 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 so you are not doing pam pam which is you're playing you're not your the the space where you're playing in that music, it is not crashing with someone else's groove or rhythm. Do you understand? In fact, if you see that there are too many sounds in already and too many grooves, you can just press one note. You don't need to be noisy about it. You understand? This is going to help you organize yourself. Because a lot of keyboardists cannot play. When they give them auxiliary keyboard to play, they, 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 they don't even know how to play. They start playing different things. You understand? So first things first, everybody should be coordinated with the progression of the music. Flow with the same progression of the music. So that is the work of the main keyboard is, is for you to lead the 
auxiliary keyboardist with the original progression because the auxiliary keyboardist is following your progression so you as the auxiliary keyboards not at the start song immediately boom you just immediately want to play you have not listened what's the progression that this main keyboardist is going to flow so that from there i know what to add do you understand just like here you see what's happening right now so i'm going to switch off switch on everything but for your grace, very simple i could not very organized saved. music but for your grace now this is what we have now let's go back now then i say okay auxiliary keyboard you're listening you listen to this song see it's playing and you're like but what do i add to this to add color let's listen again and see as an auxiliary keyboard keyboard is i'm not listening to the sound i say okay everything is beautiful I say okay i can add some strings to this music to make it beautiful and let me tell you something when you're using strings and when you're using for let's like, say okay let us take this as the first sound you can use as an auxiliary keyboard is strings it's not like strings apply to all you understand but it's a good sound you can apply let me tell you something about strings that you don't know strings is a very powerful sound you understand so don't use it it is not it is not every time it should enter the music if you're an auxiliary keyboardist it should be used to hide to 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 uh how like it to highlight some tension in the sound it should be used to create some certain tension to highlight some places it's not as the keyboard is playing this plane the main auxiliary and main keyboard is playing all the band is playing you're playing strings from beginning to end what is wrong with you do you want me to bite your ear or to drag your ear before you understand this no it's now let us play this so i'll show you now let's say i have a strings right now now watch i'll listen to the music i listen to the band playing i'm not going to come in yet now watch when i'm going to come in but for your grace I'm listening. I'm like, wow, beautiful. Okay, so that's the progression. I'm listening. Now, you see, when I'm going to come in now, I'm coming in here now. sounds organized organized so you leave the or auxiliary the main keyboardist to be he's the one that is supposed to play at every instant because he's the main keyboardist you understand and main keyboardist you can use any sound but i mean the, the, most most of the time they use their ground the ground piano and the main voice that is there so he's the one that's busy that's playing steady because he has to hold down the groove also like it's not every time you have to enter sometimes you enter you pause you enter you create tension you think you do you change your sound you understand so if you are acting as a backup uh uh keyboardist this is one thing you should take notes imagine if i'm doing this looks like it is beautiful to you but sincerely i must tell you it is not organized it is not organized now when you play too steady like this you are fighting with certain frequency with the with other instruments that is supposed to make the music beautiful you're fighting with the lead guitarist you're fighting with the bassist you're fighting with the 
uh, main keyboardist, you're fighting with the drummer, you're fighting with the singer. No. But if you play at a specific side of the music, you see, you just come in, you create tension, you pause. You come, especially if you're using a string voice, string voice. Let's go again with the sound. Now we enjoy the music like this. And the backup keyboard is relax, listen to the progression. Understand? But for your listen, grace, listen. I would go. go. So you can enter from here slow and steady. Then watch what happens. You man, now you don't have to do it like me because everybody's creativity is totally different. But you can take some very good tips from what I've explained right now because there are some situations you can find yourself playing in the midst of four auxiliary keyboardists. You're the number four auxiliary keyboardist playing. So, what do you play at that point? So it is more like that's why it is that's why I said most keyboardists, piano players have a little idea about music production. It shows how sound should come in. All sounds cannot come in at the same time, and that's why you, as an as an accompanying uh, piano player, as a backup piano player, as an auxiliary piano player, you're backing up the main keyboardist. You have to understand, especially when you're using this string sound. String sound, it's a very sharp, it's a, it's a, it's, how will I say it? It's, it's not a sound that you want to use to make noise. So it should come in little, little. So the first sound you can use as an auxiliary keyboard is, is the strings. It's a, a string sound. Now, if you want to play too steady, you want to play too steady, you understand? What can you use? You can use a sound, you can use pad, pad voices. You can use pad voices. If you use pad voices, it is allowed. You can, you can play continuously. That's very okay to use pad voices. But don't play straight when you're using strings. Don't try it. It's going to sound clashy. Now, let's just make for the example. Let us make for the example and use a pad voice. Uh, I'm, going to take, <coughs> I'm going to take it a pad voice right now. Now, this pad I'm using is called one pad. A lot of us have this one pad, so it's called one pad. But when you're using this, you now have to balance your volume in a way that... So this is where your creativity comes in. You understand? You have to make sure your volume is not too loud, it's not too low. It is not fighting with the frequency of the main keyboardist. And also, your choice of pad voice is different. Now, pad is different from strings. This is how pad sounds. In fact, let me use... There's a, there's a pad I like using. Also one pad, but this is it. Um, you see what happens now when we add this. This is one pad also. One pad, yeah. So this is it. So this is it. So, now I have this pad voice. I'm going to turn down my volume of my keyboard. It's not you're using pad voice. You want to increase volume. That's why you like fighting with the sound engineer. Every time you're a sound engineer, you're fighting. Well, I know some, some very funny sound engineer. They, don't even, they will reduce your volume. Do you understand? Naturally, you should keep your volume on 12 o'clock. If you put your volume more than 12 o'clock, it means your, it, 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 the, the sound engineer did not do a good job during uh, uh, sound check. At 12 o'clock, you should, you should be able to hear yourself loud and clear. You understand what I mean by 12 o'clock? When your volume knob is set in the middle, 12 o'clock, because most times we adjust volume, we use uh, time to say, okay, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, so it's easy to know where you want to put your volume. So, at 12 o'clock, you can't hear yourself clear, then there's a problem with the setting. So I reduce my settings, I reduce my strings, my, my pad voice 
now you see this is part voice this is how it sound now let me show you how string sounds also just strings just use right away right now so you understand so you see this is now you see how string is sounding then you see how pad is sounding you see pad now you notice that pad is more suiting it's more calm it's more emotional it is more piercing to the soul <laughs> you understand so that is what pad pad voice can do it has more piercing sound it, however i've shown you how to use string voice if you're using strings don't play continuously it should come and go create tension it's more like you're use you're trying to create a, a kind of orchestra atmosphere you understand it's not something that should be stable on if not it's going to be harsh because imagine this is how string sounds you understand but this is how pad sounds now oops testing one two testing oh my God. yep so now let's use a pad voice and reduce the volume of our pad then play our music again remember the first one we used was strings now as we keep going i will record it and i'll show you how it is so i'm going to record it in the music production software here and show you how it is understand so this is pad voice let's play our music again but for your grace, now I could not pad voice you're allowed to play straight you understand because it's, it's already calm I'm going to take off no more pad voice. It's sounding, but the pad voice gives it this kind of this kind of feel that makes it full. It makes the atmosphere full. You understand? The music is full on itself, but the pad voice makes it even fuller. Now let's record it to create more emphasis on it. I'm going to record it right away then i'm going to create more so that when i'm explaining i'm showing you the practical exp uh, application of this now don't forget to share this video so more persons can join now i'm going to record pad so i'm going to keep it here and i'm going to call this pad okay so i'm going to color it pink good okay so I have pad, so I'm going to record it now. One, two, three, go. Oh, sorry. So pad now. Yep. So let's go. One, two, three, go. But for your grace, I could not. But for your grace, I would go my way And forever grateful that you've been so faithful to me, Lord For your amazing grace See? And but for your grace, I can play steady because I'm using power Beautiful sound. Good. So we have a pad sound there. So you see. So this is our pad voice. Now I'm going to switch everything off so you can hear the pad and the drums together. But for your grace, I could not be saved. But so just for more emphasis sake, I'm going to turn down the volume of the pad a little bit. Do you see how it sounded? Now when you're playing with a band and you have plenty other uh, instrumentalists playing, 
it is not composed that you must overhear yourself to the point that you must see there are some hearing that are perceived hearing some some sounds you just have to perceive it once you can hear it to if to a fault that's good it's not like you must increase it increase it. everybody's increasing their volume fighting for space you're destroying the music in a well-organized setting even if you have 100 instrumentalists playing together once everybody knows when they should play what they should play learn not to fight with each each other's groove you have an organized music and let me tell you it is even if maybe you're a trumpeter or whatever or you're a, i know why i like calling trumpeters because this is they like to look for my trouble you're a trumpeter you're a saxophone. it's not every time you should enter and that's why i gave that example with strings it's not every time you should enter there are some time you pause there are some time you wait some sounds you enter when they say okay time to solo you know sometimes you stay in fact let me not go there that's the topic on another side on another day now this is the pad voice now without pad voice this is what we had um this is what we had sounds beautiful now let us switch on our pad and see how it has color Now, how many instrumentalists do we have here? We have one drummer, two basses, three keyboardists, four guitarists. Don't forget there's a guitarist playing. No, this is what the guitarist is playing. That's why I tell you it's not composite that it must overshadow everybody. You see what the guitarist is playing. see now only piano player and guitarist but they are not clashing that is how you know when the sound is organized so listening to other people grooves and what they are playing then think of what you should play that shouldn't clash so if you're using a technique that is clashing with somebody else there's a problem so if you just play without considering other people that are in the band, you, you think you're soloing is a solo or you're just caught there to play alone. You have to listen. What is this person playing also? What can I play also? We are all backing up. In fact, I'm not going there. So you as an auxiliary keyboardist, sir, you listen also. You think of what to play. So I explained the first one. I said you can use strings. The second one, I say pad. Now, I'm just playing this. Now, if I even add the bass, you see what happens. Drum, no nothing, but it is still beautiful. That is how it should sound. Everybody know when to enter, know what to do. Now we add all these. We have four instrumentalists. You understand? So we now have one auxiliary keyboardist who is playing, who is playing the pad voice. Now let us have another auxiliary keyboardist that is going to play strings for us. Now I'll now tell you why when I apply that strings part. So let's say strings. I'm going to color this uh, blue. Good. Let's be sure the screen has to change. Okay, so we have strings. So, <coughs> so now we see strings here, <coughs> which is here. Now I'll, I'll play. We have our pad, our guitar, we have our piano, our bass, our drum. So we have like one, two, three, four, five instrumental is playing. Now, we need another auxiliary keyboardist. Now, we have our main keyboardist, which is piano. We have the first auxiliary keyboardist playing pad. Now, let's say it is a situation where they have three keyboard. You understand? You, now, you want to go and play. What should you play? Because some people, you see three keyboard, and maybe you are three keyboard is there, or uh, you, you go to an event, they have three keyboard, and they are only using two. You now say, okay, let's you go and play the third one. By the time you go to play the third keyboard, you spoil everything because you're going there to play noise and scatter. You just scatter everything because your choice, your voice selection, everything scatter. So now we want to use strings. We have someone playing auxiliary keyboard, which is pad. Now let us use strings. And remember what I told you about when you're using a string voice. You don't play every time. You come in from time to time. But if you're using pad, 
you can play pad straight. You can hold pad for as long as you can. But it's emotional. It is not harsh. Now, let us go to... Uh, let us change back to... And select our strings. So, this is strings. So, for now, I'm just going to include it for a little. Now, let's play the sound again and see. Because I'm, I'm using string I'm listening. I would go Now I, I want to enter now Watch, watch what happens Again, every time, then you want to create another tension. I'm forever. You rest again, you rest, you go again. But so you see, you see how the string is entering, it's not every time it's entering, so that's what makes it beautiful. That's what makes it fine. It's not. But I guess for your best, I you're fighting. You're fighting with the sound. Like I said, everybody's creativity is totally different. Do you understand? But you can use this to, uh, to have a very good uh, pace when you want to play along with, an, with a main keyboard. You see, the main keyboard is not now busy going to do. Okay, let me show you this one. Let me just let me, let me show you. I'm gonna keep this here. Now, now imagine I'm gonna shut down this main keyboardist and I'm going to act as a noisy main keyboardist. Now I'm now playing like this because I can play. I want to make noise. Watch. So I'm playing. Now watch. that that's noisy that's noisy all the simple chords simple progression why you're being unusually skillful and creative with it so if i'm playing like this most of you when you see somebody playing on stage because they are not making noise you say hey, this person don't know how to play this person don't know how to play if it's me i'll go and finish what i do what you want to go and play you go there and go and make noise that's not it you understand the fact someone is being disciplined when playing with the band it is totally different i'm going to shut down everybody and i'm going to play as alone as the keyboard is now my plane will be totally different you understand right now watch what happens now if i'm going to play alone and the singer is singing watch what happens but for your grace i could not be saved see what happens but for your grace i would go my way see i'm forever grateful that's it I get more busy because I'm alone. I'm playing alone. I'm not playing with the band. When I'm playing with the band, I have to consider 
the lead guitarist is, guitarist is there doing something doing I, i'm talking to you now main keyboardists that like to make noise you should be the one to hold down the groove if anything about noise self is the auxiliary keyboardists that should be doing it you should hold down the groove make the music cool and you should monitor the auxiliary keyboardists when they are trying to to overdo what they are supposed to do you understand in most cases when i have auxiliary keyboards uh, i even tell you the company i like even playing the auxiliary keyboards because it gives me the um freedom to be uh creative and, ex and expressive so i like playing the auxiliary keyboards you understand so now we have we have pad i've shown you for pad but for your grace, good now what does that sound can you use so we say we have I've shown you how to use strings. I'm not going to record that. I'm just going to keep it to show you that. So the next one you can use as an auxiliary keyboard when you have a uh, keyboard is you can use sounds called synths. Synthesizers. <laughs> Synthesizers. You know, a lot of people have these options on their keyboard and they don't use it. You understand? They have all these options on their keyboard. But they don't utilize all these options. So there's there are sounds called uh, synthesizers. It's just synth. So you can go there. Now one synth I like to use. Uh, let me look for it. Just a second. Let me look for that synth sound. It's um. Let me see if I'm gonna find it. If I find it, I'll let you know right away. So let's look for that synth sound. So you can use a synth sound when you will have another keyboard is playing a pad. Don't go and use synth when there's no pad voice already. You have grand piano and immediately you want to say you're playing auxiliary. Unless probably the grand the person playing grand piano has, is doing a dual. You know, understand? There's a layer voice. He's using a pad layer voice. Uh -huh. But even at that, what I do most of the time is I split the keyboard. I split the keyboard. This side, I'm going to put pad. This side, I'm going to put... Um, my synth or whatever i want to do you understand and if you're lucky enough you have two or three keyboards as your auxiliary you have two or three keyboards you can just put one keyboard pad one keyboard strings one keyboard synth you understand so that you don't have to stretch yourself with all the settings and the rest that's why i tell people the more advanced you go the more easy it is for you but you don't understand now Imagine you go for a very big, you see a big event and you see a keyboard is playing four keyboard. And you're there saying, wow, wow. It's just to make things easy. They split everything. They don't have to bother about saving and they split everything. They have to choose, okay, this first keyboard is going to play strings. Second keyboard is going to play pad. Everything is easy for the other keyboard. But us that are coming up, you that are coming up, you now have to start switching immediately, trying to change, trying to do like you're a DJ. <laughs> Which is even more stressful for you so like i said the more advanced you get the more tools you have to make things easy for you a lot of keyboardists have turned to dg they switch to turn switch <laughs> it's not easy i mean but i mean but that's that is what it is so let us look for this synth sound i like uh there's a particular synth sound i like uh let's see if it's this let's see if it's this one No, no, I don't think it's this one. I think it's gonna be this one. I think I like this one. But that's not emotional for me. So, they use your discretion when you're looking for a particular sound anyways. Okay, so good. I like this synth sound. So, I've got to apply this. Now, let's do this. I just I'm trying to adjust the uh trying to adjust the um one second okay trying to adjust the pitch pen <coughs> okay good so we have our synth sound here ready to go now we're gonna play our sound again Why should you use synths especially when you have the sound i'm using is called monopoly you understand but you can use different synth sounds you have on your keyboard when should you use synth there's synth lead sounds and the rest you should use synth when 
there is a tension in the music. Now, in this particular uh, soundtrack I used, I didn't create any tension with the thing. There's a point that's saying, but for your grace, everybody go to your... No, that point that there's a tension, there's a lot of ad libs hitting this music. That's when you now use, you want to use your, your, your synth sound to create more tensions. So let's continue. So you can still do it, do it calmly. It's still okay. Synth also works like uh, strings. So you, you shouldn't do it every time. It should come and go. It should come and go. So watch. Okay. I'll show you what's going to happen there. But for your grace. Try to make sure you're not crashing with the singer. So most times I'll say, do the solo, the skills when the singer is silent. For example, pause for your grace. You can do something. I will then. You can do something. Your way. Do something. You have that space. So something like this. So you see, I'm doing it in between when I have little space. And the singer is not saying anything, or in between when the singer is trying to take some breath, then I do it too. Do you understand? If it's a song that has a tension, see what's happening. But you have to make sure that you're still organized in what you're doing. So it doesn't sound noisy. So another sound you can use as a backup kit. So, cause some people are out of ideas when they play auxiliary keyboard. They're like, oh, what? It's not that because you're playing auxiliary keyboard, you must be playing every time. Because if they're singing a song for 10 minutes, you must play for that time. No. It's to calm down, you play, calm down, you play. That's what makes it beautiful. Let the lead, keep the lead um, piano player play what they want to play. And that po um, um, process, F, when you're playing, when you calm down, it gives the, uh, main, the main keyboardist the time to express themselves also and be creative and beautiful so that you guys don't fight. Now, what's the next sound you can use as an auxiliary keyboardist? The backup keyboardist, anyways. You can use a sound, um, you can use um, a sound, Cool Riot. Yeah, Cool Riot. Now, I'm going to do the praise version. I'm going to do the praise version. If I get uh, 60 shares for this video, I'll do a praise version. Else, I'll just take another topic. So I'll do the praise version tomorrow. Because a lot of people don't know how to back up oh, that one. Praise. Praise. During praise, when people play back up that one, that, that's when they fight very well. That's like the main fight. So let's go. So I'm going to take pick a sound. Now this sound is uh, Cool Riot. You all know what Cool Riot sounds. Well, I'll show you how it sounds. Let me look for it. So, so. so you can also use, but remember, when applying all this, make sure there is a pad, a steady pad sound already. So it has this full sound. You, you can switch between sounds, you understand? So if you have your strings laid out, you have your cool riot laid out, you have your synth laid out, everything, you can now switch. You say play strings, this to now. The next time you play, so that's what makes the music even creative and beautiful. And there are some songs that are sweet to use strings as an auxiliary. Some are sweet to use pad, um, uh, um, 
cool right and the rest you understand so cool i think i like this one i just heard something I like so i like this one <clears throat> so you see but this this one is uh it's nice but it has the i'm looking for a cool right let's see I think this one is it. <laughs> so we all know what Kurayo it is is found on what your keyboard see. So you see this one. So you can use this sound as an auxiliary keyboard is also to make the music sound beautiful. Now watch this. Sometimes cool riot works like when you want to do some kind of crazy skills. Something like this. Hey, pause. So you get because it is not enough to just use a sound as an auxiliary keyboard or backup keyboard, and you don't know. What context are you using that sound on? You understand? Like, what context should you use that sound? So, it's very essential to know the context where you're using the sound. So, this one is, I like this cool ride. It's very beautiful. You understand? If, if, if you want to run some, create some tension with it, you can create also very beautiful. So, <clears throat> no matter if you have 10 keyboards playing, if you know what you're doing, You'll be able to fit in and if everybody coordinates themselves you'll be able to fit in do you understand so this one you can use school riot showing you a little bit of some examples you can try with it understand then what other one can you use you have cool riot uh, you can use you can use a violin you can use so many as the auxiliary keyboards now you have to be switching from voice to voice depending on the mood, depending on the context, depending on what you're looking for. You know why I use these ones? It's because I know physically most times you can't see a keyboard, a, an instrument that's called Crew Riot that is playing there. No. You can only see trumpeter, saxophonist, violinist, you understand? Um... Uh, lead guitarist and the rest that's why i'm not using it as an auxiliary i didn't tell you you can use those ones you understand but i'm using the one that if per adventure you have all these ones i've listed life on stage like right now on this stage you have a lead guitarist you have all these ones live on stage you understand you can use all the sounds because some people are handicapped once once there's there's a lead guitarist on stage they don't even know what to play again once there's a second uh, keyboard, they don't even know what they don't even know. What, in fact, if they now have two keyboards is playing, then after they tell them to come and play the third keyboard, that one you have finished them. They don't know what to play. They are only used to playing one sound, used to playing main keyboard. No, there are several os options you can explore. So yeah, the Ozilai, I love playing Ozilai keyboards. In fact, most times when I go for events with other keyboards, I just tell them, please, let me play the Ozilai keyboard. Do you understand? Let me play the Ozilai. You play the main one. <laughs> we run. <laughs> she get. Now, don't take it like the Ozilai keyboard is even doing. They're, they're doing more work because you're accompanying. But see, the main keyboard is because they are playing, they are doing more work than you said. Because the main keyboard is a piano player, they are the one that plays the main progression. Everybody flows. I've explained that previously in the video, so I don't think there's a need. Now, we're going to play through this again, and I'll be switching sounds in this music. I'll be switching sounds. Now, we have our part voice. 
we have our part voice already so i'll be switching so let's go beautiful Every time, and boss for your grace, I could not. you know, one thing with strings, it, it gives it, it is supposed to do a replacement for an orchestra string. Is well, so if you're playing, think, and that is why I'm going to advise you open your mind, listen to different kinds of music. You understand, so that you're able to picture, oh, okay, in this setting, you can even take ideas from them. If an example, it was fire. Stand. So let's go again. It was for your grace. I will go away. Watch what happened. Let's change to another sound. Another one now with our scenes. But for your grace, I could not be saved. But for your grace, I would go my way. So what happened? I'm forever grateful that you be. Back to strings. As an Ozzy, so this is very good ideas you can explore. You can so that is how the master the art of accompaniment piano as a backup instrument. So this should help you. Um, there's more to this. There's more to this. Um, I might see if I'm going to do a part two of this, and also I might see if I'm going to do a praise version of this. This is for worship, anyways. But you can use this idea for any other um, music genre, you understand. So thanks for watching. See you guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye.